り出した白い闇切り裂く翼になれ I hope you're ready because it's time to wrap up the kana with the last video thus concerning. These deal with the incomplete kana sets, meaning that there are sounds a, i, u, e, o that are not represented by them. Either they do not exist or they existed in the past and are not used anymore. There are some sounds that you can mimic by combining some other sets, but that's beside the point. Since there's a lot of little kana points that I have to go over, I'm going to just go right through this. If you don't get it, just pause it, go through it slowly. But here's the idea. There's a lot of information to cover, so without any further ado, let's go. This is the hiragana ya. With the y's, there is no yi and there is no ye sound. So, first you make a line from the upper left into the middle. Then you're going to make this fun curve that kind of makes it look like a very fancy English R. And then you're going to make a little dash over to the right hand side of the first line that you drew, just intersecting the upper portion. And that is a hiragana ya. The katakana ya looks pretty similar. You're going to make the same stroke as in the hiragana ya. And then you are going to make a sharper version of the second stroke. And then you're not going to make a little dash. You're just going to leave it like that. Then there's the hiragana yu. You're going to start by making a small line over to your left and looping it around almost in upon itself, but not quite touching, ending somewhere in the middle. And then you're going to make a rather large line intersecting from the, vi from the top through the middle and out the bottom. And that's going to be your hiragana yu. The katakana yu is a little more straightforward. You're going to make something of a backward seven, just going straight across and then going straight down, and making a large line, almost like an underline. If it intersects a little bit, that's okay. It's mainly just supposed to be on the bottom. And that is your katakana yu. Then there's the hiragana yo. You're going to make that curve curvy line that you've made a couple times before in the hiragana ho, in the hiragana ha you should be pretty familiar with it but that's all there is to it and then you're going to make a little arm over to the right hand side not going all the way through it like it would be in the right hand portion of the hiragana ha just to the right not intersecting then there is the katakana yo you're going to make a line across and then connect it to a line straight down one stroke and then you're going to make two horizontal lines one going in the middle and one going on the bottom kind of looking like a very organized three then we move into the w's of japanese of which there are only two the w is not a wa in japanese it's more of a wa it's not watashi it's watashi there's a bit of a difference it doesn't make that much of a difference, but it's good to know. This probably looks very familiar. I warned you about it. It's the third kana with these relatively exactly the same strokes, but there are differences, and the little differences make a lot of difference. There is no we, there is no we, and there is no wu in Japanese. There used to be, but they've long since been deleted from the kana list. They're just sounds that you don't make anymore. You make a strong, straight line down, and then you make that funky little curve. But you don't make a curl at the end, and you don't make a curve going to the right anymore. You just curve into yourself, landing somewhere in the middle. And that is the hiragana wa. This is the katakana wa, which looks quite a bit like the katakana u. You start with that little dash, and you make that stroke that I don't know how to explain. The difference is there's not that little stroke on the very top. This is the hiragana wo, which is your last of the really funky looking kana. You're going to make a straight line and then you are going to go through that line branching over to the left and you're going to go in on yourself a little bit with a little dip into the middle. And then you're going to make that roundabout curve going from right to right. 
upper right to lower right. And just practice getting comfortable with those strokes because they are pretty weird, even amongst Japanese characters. So that is the hiragana wo. The hiragana wo has lost its wu part and has just been reduced to basically o when it is signifying that something is a direct object. Just like ha becomes wa when it defines something as the topic of a sentence, aka the subject. Wo changes to more of an o when it signifies something is a direct object. It's the same exact concept. That is done with the hiragana wo only. This is the katakana wo. You make that stroke, which I don't know how to explain, and then you put a line through it, more into it. It does not go all the way through. Okay, and that's all there is to the katakana wo. Remember how I said the katakana and the hiragana all have sounds that are a, i, u, e, o related? I lied. There is one exception. This is m. Mm. It's pretty easy to remember because it looks like a very fancy n, but that's all it is. In nobaji, it is simply regarded as an n that is not followed by any other sound that is part of it. So there is a nani nu ne no, and then there's an n all by itself. You just make an m mm sound. That's all you have to do. So you make that one stroke. It's pretty simple, just basically a fancy n. That's all there is to it. Then there is a katakana m, mm, which looks like so. The difference is you're going to draw m mm from the bottom up, and then you make that little dash. Those are all of the kana. Congratulations, that's your last set right there. Now there are a couple little things I just have to brush over so you are comfortable with using these completely. There are a couple little rules that you might want to know. These should look familiar to you by now. These are just the consonantal hiragana that are followed by the E sound. When followed by a small version of ya, yu, and yo, their sound changes a little bit. Let's go over them. Just quickly now, it changes to kya, kyu, kyo, and there's also a gya, gyu, gyo, sha, shu, sho, ja, ju, jo, cha, chu, cho, ja, ju, jo, nya, nyu, nyo, hya, hyu, hyo, bya, byu, byo, pya, pyu, pyo, mya, myu, myo. There's really not much of a difference when it comes to the sounds. And all you have to do is follow them with a small version of ya, yu, and yo, respectively. When elongating a vowel sound in hiragana, you usually will just repeat the kana. This is much more common in katakana, in which case you will not see the double kana right there. You are going to see a dash. I put the double kana there just so you realize that it's still the equivalent of the above, but there's going to be a dash, not a double kana. Make note of that. The exceptions to this are usually u and o, which are followed by a, an u. Both of them are followed by an u, which simply elongates the sound. So let's review a little bit. This is desho, which technically means is probably. De is the same. She is followed by a small yo, which turns it into sho. The fact that it's followed by an u afterwards elongates the sho sound. So instead of, instead of deshio, which it's not at all, it, and it's not desho, it's desho, elongated. This technically means 10 cylindrical objects. You'll notice two small kana. The u means the g is now the ju sound, and the little tsu means the po is now a po sound with a small pause. So this is jipon. When we are doubling an n sound, we don't use a small tsu. We use an n instead. So honnin, meaning the person himself, is honnin with the small pause of the n, but that's not represented by a tsu. Hu, followed by an a, e, an e, or an o, makes a different, very foreign sound that it becomes fa, fi, fe, fo. It's not really common in any case, but it's almost always katakana, though there are exceptions. Look at this quickly. Note that there is an apostrophe between the n and the ya, which means it's not nya, it's nya. I'm not even going to tell you what this word means because it's really obscure. You're never going to see it. You're never going to use it, but this is an example. You see a hiragana hu followed by a small hiragana a. It's very rare. It's almost impossible. That's it for this video. Be prepared for the kanji next time. Ask me any questions. This is Angel of Crepuscan signing off.